For simple scenes like this, the new True 3D workspace in After Effects comes very handy. But for the moment, you need to cheat to add depth of field. The question is, what's actually depth of field? I don't know. Uh, let me Google it, yeah? Depth of field is the portion of that distance or depth that is in focus. A higher depth of field would see the whole image from foreground to background sharp and in focus. A lower depth would result in blurry backgrounds and blurred elements in the foreground too. The advanced 3D renderer gave us a lot of new possibilities for After Effects. However, what's still missing is the option to adjust the depth of field. But until it's implemented, I have a workaround for you. I already prepared a composition with a 3D scene so we can get straight to the point. We have a camera parented to a target null with which I can do some camera art movements. Then I use two solids for the background, one for a shadow catcher and the other one to cover the rest. For the shadow catcher, I applied a mask to the solid to make the background seamless. I added an environment light that is responsible for the reflections and the shadows. And also an ambient light that tints the 3D scene. And of course the 3D objects, in my case exported from Cinema 4D, arranged one behind the other, thus perfect to apply depth of field to. To create depth of field, we need a depth map. We could use an external AI tool or an AI plugin like Depth Scanner, but I want to show you a workaround inside After Effects without plugins. Select the target null, the camera and the 3D objects, go to Edit and select Copy with Property Links, I'll explain later why. Then duplicate the composition, name it Depth Map and open it. Delete every layer except of the background layers and paste the copied layers into the composition. To create a proper depth map, you need to export the same objects from your favorite 3D tool but without the material or texture. Just with a neutral color, without reflections. In After Effects, replace the original objects with the doll equivalent by pressing the Alt key and dragging them onto the original models. And now comes the trick. Create a point light, make sure the color is white and parent it to the camera. Zero out the position so it sits in the center of the camera, frontally illuminating the objects. Then set fall off to inverse square clamped and adjust the radius so that the object nearest to the camera receives the most light while the farthest one, the background, gets almost no light. Also adjust the intensity until the closest object gets almost white. We also need to make sure that no part of each object should be darker than the objects behind. We could easily fix it with an effect like the curves or the levels effect. But because we cannot directly apply effects to 3D model layers, we need to create a solid on top of everything, apply a calculations effect to it, set second layer to one of the 3D objects, increase the second layer opacity to 100% and set blending mode to copy to get rid of the background. Do the same for the other objects by duplicating the solid layer and setting the second layer to the other objects. Because there are 2D layers, not considering the 3D space, we need to put the layers in the right order. Having the 3D objects as 2D layers, we can now apply a levels effect to each of them to lower the contrast. As I said before, no part of each 3D model should be darker than the object behind. When we have both compositions side by side and animate the objects from the main comp, we can notice that they drive the layers and the depth map composition thanks to the link properties. And when we also animate the camera, the decreasing light intensity with further distance stays consistent in every angle because we parented the light to the camera. Now that we've created a depth map, we can move over to the fun part. Grab both the main comp and the depth map comp and throw them onto the new composition icon to put them into a single composition. Let's name it Final Comp. Apply a lens blur effect to the main comp, increase the blur radius, set the blur map layer to the depth map comp and check Invert Blur Map. The result looks decent. But since the camera lens blur is not the best depth blur effect, you can still see some sharp edges here. 
We can fix it by opening the depth map composition and applying a fast box blur effect to each of the affected layers and increasing the blur radius a bit. I think this looks good. But when we play around with the blur focal distance to do a rec focus, the blur behaves quite strange in my opinion. If this is okay for you, then go for it or just avoid doing rec focus shots. But if you can afford it, I would recommend the Frischluft depth of field effect, which is a paid plugin, but is the best in my opinion. But before we set it up, deactivate the fast box blur effects in the depth map comp first. Similar to the camera lens blur, increase the radius and set the depth map layer to the depth map composition. And look at this, the blur looks more precise and there are no sharp edges where it should be blurry. And when we decrease the focal point, we can achieve a really nice rec focus where every object is totally crisp at a certain point, which is not the case when we use the fast box blur workaround technique in conjunction with the camera lens blur. Animate the focal point and hit play. A really nice rec focus. And that's it guys. Thanks guys for watching. See you next time. And the following clip has a deep depth of field. Yeah. <laughs>